All right, y'all, this video is going to be a very in-depth trading view tutorial. Now, trading view is one of the best charting platforms out there. You can use this to do technical analysis if you're new to trading, if you've been trading for a while, and you just want somebody to walk you through all the functions and features of trading view. That is what I'm going to do in this video, and I'm going to assume that you don't know anything about trading view. Guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to like the video. I oftentimes am making videos about trading strategies as well as different tutorials and technical analysis, mostly about cryptocurrency, but I will be expanding that as well. So let's start out trading view. I'm going to go through these sections now in order. We're going to start with this left menu labeled A. Then we're going to go into the main section right here where we see the price action. Then we're going to talk about the right-hand menu and area right here. Then we'll talk about these features on the top as well as these things down here on the bottom. So let's start here on Section A, Area A. Okay, this is where we're going to find some very important tools that we're going to use to actually mark up our chart. Okay, we're going to get the, the brush tool to paint on it, trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, essentially everything that you want to have on your chart. Now, if we come over here... And I'm just going. I'm going to uh, create a new a new chart layout, just for the sake of this video here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and um, just make everything completely as if. Yeah, there we go. This is as if I had never. Uh, you know, this is how Trading View will look if you just open it up for the first time, right? Um, I'll get into all this later, but. You know, we have the red and green candlesticks. Uh, by the way, if somebody doesn't know, this is the price action. These things are called candlesticks. Um, but that's not the scope of this video. So this area A, okay, when you're looking at your chart and you're looking at the price action, to do technical analysis, we're going to want to do things onto the chart, like draw trend lines, for example. Let's uh, change the color here, make it red. Okay, if we notice that there's some kind of trend line forming, like let's say right here, perhaps we have a trend line. Uh, all these tools, you know, drawing on our chart so we can make nice spirals right here or typing something on the chart. This is going to be found over here on this left menu. So let's go through what exactly everything is and how you're going to use it. So the first thing we have right here is the cursor type. Now on all these buttons, you will be able to click the button and then there's a little arrow which will allow you to click, you know, and get different options. So for all of these, you know, this trend line, if I click that arrow, I get a whole bunch of different options here. Same with the gone fans and stuff like that, the pitchforks. And so basically, first we have these cursors, okay? We can choose between a crosshair, a dot, an arrow, or the eraser if we want to delete something. So really, I can have the dot right here instead of the crosshair, if you like a dot better than a crosshair. We've got the arrow, if you like the arrow, better than the crosshair. And then we have this eraser, okay? The way the eraser works is, let's say I drew something on here and I don't like how it looks or I want to get rid of it, I just click the eraser and, uh, you know, I can remove it like that. Personally, I like to keep it on the crosshair, but it's a matter of preference. Underneath that, we have the trend lines. We have a lot of different types of trend lines in here. Uh, we've got a regular trend line where you can use it by clicking somewhere and then dragging your mouse and clicking somewhere else, creating two points, okay? Then underneath the trend line, we've got the info line. And basically, this is now giving you some information, right, about a certain place, right? It's telling you the degree of the angle that the line is. It's telling you how many candlesticks uh, spans the distance, how many pixels. Um, and it's telling you the height as well. What percent is it from... This high here to this low here is telling us that it's minus 4.14%. Okay, so this is a line that's giving you a little bit more information if you want to use that on your chart. Something else, guys, if you want to delete something, really, you just highlight something on the chart. Notice when I click it, now it's highlighted and I can just backspace and delete that. Okay, you can do that also with uh, any kind of drawing. Now we've got trend angles. These are just uh, basically going to show you, you know, the angle of something, right? You can see down here that this is a 29 degree angle. Uh, we've got an anchored VWAP 
coming in here where we can uh, this is just a, a volume um, volume weighted average price people use this for technical analysis dynamic support or resistance uh, we've got the horizontal line which will you know if we want to draw a horizontal level of resistance we can simply do that by clicking that horizontal line and then clicking a place on the chart and you can see now we've got a horizontal line something else a shortcut if there's a shortcut for one of these things you will see the little shortcut right here so for example I can do option H on the screen just to get a horizontal line instead of having to come over here and click once and click twice also guys you can control Z to undo things as well on here then we've got the horizontal ray let's say we want to put a line on our chart but we only want it to come to a certain point we click the horizontal ray and let's say I want to mark this resistance starting right here now you can see I have a ray that only comes up to this point right here okay it's different than a horizontal line which would span all the way across my screen Whoops. It's um, hang on. it's just a ray going up to one specific place. Okay, now I'm going to go through the rest of these pretty quickly because I, for the sake of time. But uh, now let's see what else we got here. We've got a vertical line. We've got a cross line, which literally just makes a cross on the chart. We've got um, an arrow, a ray. A ray is where you click one point. And now you can just pivot off that point to create levels of maybe support or resistance. So we could say, you know, we've been trading along this uh, diagonal level of support for quite some time. Uh, let me remove this text here. And then we've got uh, parallel channels. Parallel channels are if you wanted to say, um, for example, you see that we've been trading in this channel right here. Hang on, I have to change the color so that we can actually see this thing. Um, where's my parallel channel? Here it is. Yeah, so usually I use a dark layout. So, you know, this is uh, obviously... Yeah, parallel channel right here. You could say, okay, this is the high of the channel, low of the channel, the midpoint. These are your tools here. A disjointed channel. Let's say that, um, you know, different things like that. Um, flat top, curved bottom, like this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like that, you know. Like uh, to do ascending or descending triangles, right? We could, we could chart out a descending triangle like that. Or even we could chart out an ascending um, kind of... Um, uh, what is this called now? A, um, a megaphone pattern. And um, yeah, then we have a regression trend as well. Okay. Just different tools, guys. Different tools. And, you know, as you learn your technical analysis, you will find reasons to use all these things. Now, if, if you want to learn technical analysis, you want to learn the basics of trading, check out jasoncaspertrading.com. This is my course that I offer primarily it's focused on trading cryptocurrency but these things will apply to any market it's also focused around using the indicator market cipher which is the best indicator you could possibly get um, it's on a level of its own but anyway this this course you can read the testimonials this has changed the way people trade this has turned people from losing traders into profitable traders and the reason is because it gives you the skills and the knowledge you need step by step to actually learn this stuff and become a confident profitable trader going over technical analysis we go over how to use market cipher in extreme detail how to create and back test the strategy how to have a risk management strategy in place uh, check it out jasoncaspertrading.com there is a description there is a discount in the description of this video um, but this because this is not technical analysis this is just how to use trading view then we have our pitchforks and our um, Fibonacci and stuff like that okay guys so this is where you're gonna find all the pitchfork stuff okay in here um, you know of course we've got our our fans we've got our fans we've got our fib retracement tools one of my favorite things in the world 
One of my favorite things in the world is to use my good old fib retracement tool to catch nice bounces like this right off the golden pocket. Or, you know, what else do we have here? We, we there, there were some really nice trades recently, but anyway, I digress, guys. I digress. There have been some really good trades here. Um, fib trend based extension, fib time, fib circles, all your fib tools, fib channels, it's all going to be in here. Okay, then we have our brush tool. We've got a brush, a highlighter. The brush is just how you're going to draw stuff, okay? The highlighter is if you want to highlight something, right? Highlighting this area right here. Look at all this. Look at this price action. Then we've got a rectangle if we want to draw a consolidation box. And then, of course, a rounded rectangle. Or, um, what, what is that thing? Oh, a rotated rectangle, sorry. If you want to draw uh, a rectangle that's not... Um, straight up and down we've got an ellipse whoa, whoa, whoa. and uh, we've got a lot of stuff in here triangles we've got pretty much anything you could want up uh, a polyline right where we could draw something crazy something crazy like this wow this is like art class guys we've got a curve Wow, look at this. Very nice. We've got a curve. We've got a double curve. We've got an arc. Wow. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Then we have the text. Okay, this text is where we can actually draw text on the screen like this. Hello. And we'll change this to uh, green. And uh, then we have other stuff in here too, like to make a little note. I could make a note right here. To remind me, this was the swing high. Okay. We can also now make uh, signposts. Right. Nice little signpost there. Saying, hey, at this green candle. You guys get the idea here. Price labels. Okay. If I could just put one right here. Now, if I want to share this chart with somebody they know what price I'm referring to um, price notes arrows I like these arrows you can point something out we've got um, to the left to the right where you could just put a little arrow on the screen and make it bigger um, you can make it bigger I'm pretty sure by uh, no nah, actually I don't know if you can make it bigger I'm not sure but you could put arrows on the screen um, flags tons of stuff tons of stuff Underneath that, we've got our different patterns, okay? This is if you're going to be doing Elliott wave counts, if you're going to be doing head and shoulders counts, triangle patterns, ABCD formations, XABCD patterns, um, cyclic lines, time cycles, sign lines, all these different things can be drawn out here. So, for example, if you want to do a head and shoulders, um, let's, you know, I don't know where we had a head and shoulders recently. But, uh, okay, let's say that this was a head and shoulders, right? We can whoop, draw it out like this. Right? This is um, now, if we zoom in here, we can see we can use this tool to help us map things out, okay? We can do Elliott wave counts, impulse wave. We want to do one, two, three, you know, like that. We can do um, pretty much anything we want right here. Okay, a three drives pattern. This is not really a three drives pattern, guys, but <laughs> you can you can do that. Okay, so here we have our measurement tools and our projections. Okay, so long and short positions. You can use this if you want to um, see what a potential trade would be like. Let's say that I wanted to enter a short position. You know, I'm in a short position right now, okay? So let's say that I wanted to map out the short position. When we lose the support, we're going to short. And what I did was I used the short tool or the long tool. So that's going to be over here, the long tool. Let's say I want a long right here. I can project where my stop loss and take profits will be. So you can move your stop loss and your take profits. And what's cool about this is a few things. First of all, it will tell you the percentages okay as you can see right here it actually is telling us that we're looking our take profit is eight percent 
and our stop loss is 0.8%. And then this will give us our risk to reward ratio right here, 9.52. This means we are potentially going to win 9.52 times more money than we are actually risking. This is called risk to reward ratio, very important. And if you don't know about risk to reward ratios, you need to learn that if you want to start trading. Um, because it will it honestly make or break you in a lot of situations. So, yes, this is a very good tool for planning our trade setups, right, for planning the trade setups. I mean, personally, you know, for me, like, um, you know, in the Discord here, I have, you know, what I, what I like to do is I like to post potential trade setups in here, and I use this tool to to project the trade setups, like, for example... This Ethereum trade setup, you know, um, over the weekend, I was doing some technical analysis and I was saying, hey, look, you know, if we come down to this FIB level, this is a trade that I would look to take. And I had my risk to reward all mapped out. I had my take profit set and everything like that. And then, you know, when we come down to that position and we actually get the bounce off of the 618 Fibonacci level and we get a move up, we, you know, we hit that take profit one. We hit the take profit too, and you know, currently still in the trade. This is what we can use that that tool for. And um, by the way, if anybody is interested in getting into the VIP Discord, where you know we post the potential trade setups, we have um, you know daily TA updates. We have people in here posting their trade setups. Good traders in here. Uh, you can go to Jason Casper. Uh, sorry, go to Patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. That's where you can find that because a lot of people have been asking about that. Uh, of course, we have the long tool. We have the short tool. Okay, this is a short. Uh, this is a short that um, that I took actually, and this is another short that I took right here yesterday. This was a nice a nice short yesterday down to here. Took that short down to here, and then took that long from right here back up it was a nice a nice nice trading day yesterday that's all all uh documented in the discord as well um let's see what else do we have here we've got forecast okay where you can forecast different things like you think price is going to go up from there you think price is going to go down from there you have um date range where you can say okay let's see just to say, okay, you know, it's been 11 days and three hours from July 4th at 2 o'clock to July 15th at 5 o'clock. We've got um, date and price range to say, oh, okay, we've gone up, you know, um, we've, we've gone up $1,685, 4.85% uh, in 68 candles, which is 8 days and 12 hours. Um, bars pattern, right, where we can, um, hang on, honestly, I don't even know what this is used for, to be, if I had to be totally honest with you guys, I don't know what this is actually used for, but it's there, if you guys want to use it, uh, I've never actually used that tool before, uh, ghost feed, this I'm pretty sure is where, like, we're, we're projecting, like, what we think the price is going to do, and you can kind of say, yeah, based on my analysis, I think we're going to do something like this, right? And then go backwards, right? <laughs> so, okay, let's see. And then we have projection. Hang on. Uh, okay. Hang on. Sorry, guys. We have projection. This is where we can project maybe where we think things are going to go. It's pretty fancy, right? And then uh, fixed range volume profile. This is something I, I really enjoy. The fixed range volume profile, guys, this is um, something that I go into in much detail in the course. But really, like, if we want to find the range, if we want to analyze the volume within a specific, let's say, pattern like this, Right. Let's say we're trading within a specific pattern, like this uh, symmetrical triangle formation right here. We want to analyze the volume within here. We can use that fixed range 
to pull it in the triangle and find out, you know, where the most volume was traded, which was right here. Have our value area high, value area low. Very important stuff for doing technical analysis. Extremely important. And if you guys want to learn more about that, do check out JasonCasperTrading.com because we go into that big time during the technical analysis, how to use volume and stuff like that. Uh, then we have all these icons here. These are different icons you can put on the chart, okay? And these, I'm pretty sure you can make bigger and smaller, okay? Then we have our measuring tool. This is to measure, let's say you want to see how, what percent it was from the bottom to the top, 12.94%. It tells you how many bars and how much time has elapsed in that period. We have our zoom in tool. This, let's say we want to zoom into a little small piece of price action. We just drag and make a little box of the area we want to zoom into, and boom, we're zoomed into there. If you're zoomed in, or if you've been moving your chart, and you don't know how to get back to how to make it look normal, you click this refresh arrow, and that will make things look normal. Just so you know, to zoom in and out of your chart, you can drag the side here, okay, to change the scale of things. And also, you can drag the scale down here to change the size of things. Uh, to move around, you need to put on your crosshair, and you need to click and drag. Click and drag to move around. And then you can make it skinnier, fatter, taller, shorter, like this. If you mess yourself up and you want to get back to what you had, you got to click the refresh arrow, and that'll, that will do it for you. That will do it for you. If you have a whole bunch of stuff on your chart, guys, also, you can, you can if you're zoomed in as well, you can click the negative magnifying glass to zoom back out. If you have a whole bunch of stuff on your chart, right, you've got a flag, you've got a fixed range, you've got a trend line, you've got uh, an arc, and you just want to get rid of everything, you're just going to right click and click remove drawings. Okay. Then we have a magnet tool. What the magnet tool does is basically if, you're, if you are drawing a trend line, it will um, lock the trend line to the tops and bottoms of candles, okay? So I can make sure you're using extreme precision with the magnet tool. If you turn it off, the, the trend line won't actually lock into anything. It will just kind of be free flow. Then we have a pencil tool um, that's currently locked right here. This lock, okay, will lock everything on your chart. So if you have a trend line right here, and right now this trend line is movable and you might want you might move it by accident and let's say you have a fib retracement tool you might accidentally like be moving these things by accident or ruin your chart you can click the lock button and what that will do is it will make it so that you can't actually move these things which is useful sometimes so we also have the eye which will hide all your things on the chart okay this is global so if you click the lock it will lock everything on your chart if you click the eye it will hide everything on your chart. If you click the garbage can, it will remove things on your chart. Of course, if you click this arrow, you can remove only the drawings, only the indicators, which we'll cover later, or everything. Now, let's say you have a lot of stuff on your chart, right? You've got trend lines. You've got a whole bunch of horizontal lines right here. Horizontal, 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 horizontal. These are yellow, so they're hard to see. But let's change them and make them, like, green, okay? What we can do now is use something called the object tree. The object tree you will find over here in the right lower corner. When you pull it up, you have now the option to lock individual lines. Okay, so let's say, for example, I have this horizontal line right here. You see when I hover my mouse over it, look to the right on the object tree, and the, this one gets highlighted as I move my mouse over different lines. It will tell me which one it is. What I can do is I can lock only that line. I can hide and turn back on and off only that line. I can give this a name so that I know what it is, right? Um, I can give it a name here and just say uh, resistance at uh, 38.4K. Boom. And now when I'm looking at my object tree, if I have all these things on my chart, like for me, guys, I have so many things on my chart right now. Okay, so many things on my chart. And... Um, I have the object tree here, and I can turn things on and off, which is nice. Okay, I can turn things on and off. If I were to have everything on my chart at once, it would look so messy 
because I have weekly levels of support and resistance, I have daily levels, I have miscellaneous levels, I have a whole bunch of different Fibonacci pulls. In fact, if we just go to the four hour chart and refresh this thing, look at all the thing the drawings that I have on my chart here. It's crazy, right? It's absolutely crazy. I've got volume levels, I've got lower time frame support and resistance levels, I have important fib levels, I have fixed ranges on here, I've got new local and macro volume levels, I've got trend lines on here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on this chart, right? So many different things on the chart. And so what this does is it allows me to kind of look at certain things <laughs> at once and not have all this mess to deal with. Because really, if you're, if you're doing analysis, you're going to have a lot of things on your chart. Now, I know this seems pretty extreme, and it is, but keep in mind, th these are levels that I'm looking at to trade. And I'm not having all these things on my chart at once. In fact, I'm having very few of them on my chart at once. So I have the object tree here, which will keep me from going crazy, right? Keep me from going crazy. Let me um, turn everything off here, and I'll talk about folders. Okay, I'm going to talk about folders because those are really important. See how clean this is? And then if I only want to have like um, certain lines on the chart, like uh, for example, yeah, let's talk about folders. So you can create folders uh, and move your lines into folders. Like let's say I want to have a, I'll click this, create a new folder, and I'll change the name of the folder to let's say horizontal lines. And then what I can do is I can drag and drop all my horizontal lines into this folder. And um, now what I can do is I can take the folder and I can lock all my lines only. And I can turn on and off all my lines at the same time because they're in the same folder. And um, what this does is, let's go back to my chart here. I have a folder here called Daily Support and Resistance. Okay, Daily Support and Resistance. I can turn on all those daily levels at the same time or I could turn them all off because they're in the same folder and then I've given them names here so I know which one they are so for example there's a daily support level at 26.2 thousand I can turn only that one on okay I have, there's the daily level at about 40,000.6 I could turn that one on and then I could turn on the daily support down here at 33.3 .3. and so I'm, I could only be dealing now with these two lines right with these two lines and then I could pull a fixed range let's say from the time we lose that daily because I just want to analyze that price action so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that from here to here and now I've got myself this nice little range and my chart even though it has all this stuff on it I can keep it in check simply because I have my object tree and I have everything organized into folders here okay turn that off uh, delete that thing you know, I've got weekly support and resistance levels that I can turn on and turn off. I've got um, local volume levels, right? Point of control, value area lows, and stuff like that. Very important, the object tree will keep you organized, okay? It will keep you organized, especially if you spend a lot of time marking up a chart. Um, and, and then you'll find, like, it gets too sloppy, or you'll find you'll move something and be like, dang, where did I have this? And trust me, use the object tree and make sure to lock things in place and turn them off okay so now let's get into let's get into well this is all this stuff here we already went through this let's get into the next section customize the look of trading view this is the main section right here okay um, in this general area okay where the price action is where the chart is there's a lot of ways to customize this. You can right click it. The first thing you can do is, is customize the color theme. Okay, You can do a dark or a light. And now what you can do is you can create a custom theme and then save as. Okay, So you can see right here I have color themes. I have all black. This is a chart that has all black candles. Okay, uh, Another color theme, purple and blue hollow candles. Okay. Uh, another theme I have is crypto trading. This was how I used to trade crypto before I switched to purple instead of blue. And um, here we go. This is this is kind of a what I used to use. Now now this is how my charts look these days. But when I first started using purple and blue, I kept the grid lines on and stuff like that. The way that we are going to get um, 
different types of color themes is we are going to right click and then go to settings and what we can do here is we can change a whole bunch of different things we can change the body color of the candles so we can make them let's say we want the uh, upward candles to be yellow and the downward candles to be pink we want the borders of the candles we want the up candles to have a, uh, a red border and we want the downward candles to have an orange border and the wick of the candles we want that to be this nice creamy this nice creamy pink okay then we want let's say um, to change the appearance of things here the background Right? Do we want a solid background or a gradient? We can make it a gradient where we have white on the top and we have blue on the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, this is blue on the top and then the bottom color would be orange. Okay, or let's make it more of a of a an olive kind of green color. And then we can have grid lines on the chart. Do we want grid lines? Yes, I want black, thick grid lines, dashed grid lines like that and uh, the horizontal ones I want them to be purple I want them to be a line and I want them to be thick as well so I've got grid lines on our chart uh, the, the text scale we can change the scale of the text you can see to make the numbers bigger or smaller um, scale lines we can make them more or less opaque you see the outline of the chart right here I can make them orange I can make them blue I can make them pink uh, the crosshair. What color is my crosshair going to be? Let's say I want that thing to be purple. I want it to be a dotted line and I want it to be extremely thick. You know, now you could see the crosshair lines on my screen are dotted purple extremely thick. We can make them blue. We can make them light pink. Um, navigation buttons. Those are on the bottom of the chart. Right down here we can decide if we want those on or off. Okay. Um, 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 uh, huh. Settings here. Let's see what's happening. What's happening? Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, watermark. You know, on the back of the chart, you want to have a watermark showing you what the asset is. You can make it more opaque or, or transparent. You can change the color of it. Um, pain buttons. These are uh, different things on the sides here to turn them on and off. And then, of course, the margin percentages, okay? We can do all this here, guys. And then what we can do is click this downward arrow and click Save As, and I'll do Crazy Theme. Crazy Theme and click Save. And now what I can do is I can right-click, go to Color Theme, right? And I have all black and then I can easily just go back to the crazy theme and I can switch between how I want things to look okay and of course the light mode and the dark mode you can change the the, the border of it and this is how you're going to change and um, kind of you know customize this in here there are also other options like lines you can show the price line whether or not you want there to be a line where the price is currently at um, we've got uh, previous day closed lines. This will show you where the price closed at yesterday. Um, you know, average, different lines, bid and ask lines. But in general, this is the customization of this little area. So I'm going to go ahead and um, restore as default. Click OK. And so that's area B. Let's talk about area C. Okay, in this area we can search and select all the currency pairs, stocks, indexes, or cryptos that you want to follow. It's where you can set up watch lists as well as some really useful tools, push alerts, and different things like that. So, C, this is where the object tree was located, guys. We're going to go through these different things. First of all, we have our watch lists. What are our watch lists? If you have cryptocurrencies or stocks or Forex pairs that you want to always kind of keep easily able to switch between right from Bitcoin to Ethereum to a Litecoin to Link to Polkadot to XR Pizzle if you're into that you can create a watch list here how are you gonna do it 
You're going to come up here. You're going to click Create New Watch List. New. Click Save. Now what you are going to do is you are going to come up here and find the things that uh, you want. Like know what know what pairs you want, right? If you want to do four X pairs, um, you know you can search for. Um, let's do uh, the JPY and the GBP, for example. Right. Um, let's say I want to keep this on my watch list. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click this button. I'm just going to click on the pairs that I want. I'm going to click the little plus sign, add to watch list. So Euro USD, Great Britain Pound USD. Um, add these to my watch list. Um, the dollar and the and the yen, the pound and the yen, the, the euro and the dollar from Onada. There's different exchanges on here too. Make sure as you're creating your watch list that you're using the exchange that you are actually going to trade on. Otherwise, the price not, might not be accurate, okay? So now I have my watch list here. I can color code things. Let's say, you know, things that I already have looked through and I say for the day, I'm not going to be looking to enter a trade on the euro. I'll make it red. Things I'm interested in, I'll make green. Things I'm not interested in, I'll make red. Or if I'm in a trade on something, I could like make it, you know, green because I'm in a trade. If I'm not in a trade, I could turn the color off. It doesn't really matter here. But what this does is it allows us to easily change in between our pairs, okay? Uh, then underneath this, we have our alerts panel. This is how you are going to create an alert now. Creating alerts is very important. Let's say I want to be alerted when price comes to a certain level, which is you know, what I like to do when I trade, right? I like to only enter trades if price is coming to a certain level. Uh, you could check out my trading strategies on my YouTube channel, or you could even just go to jasoncaspertrading.com to learn the way I trade. But the way you're going to set an alert, you will have an object on here. Okay, and you will right click the object and click add alert. You will have options to set different conditions depending on the conditions of the market. So, Euro USD, when it's crossing this horizontal line, I want once per bar, okay, once per bar, I want to get an alert. And you can give the alert a name um, called uh, price at resistance and then what you can do is you can choose to be notified on an app this will send a push notification to your cell phone this will give you a pop-up on the screen and play a sound you want to make sure that actually there is checked play sound and you can choose what sound you want how long you want that sound to last you can even have it send a text message right send email to SMS message um, a lot of things you can do with this alert. Then you're going to click Create Alert. Once you create the alert, this will show up in the alert panel. You can then pause the alert, or you can edit the alert, or you can delete the alert by clicking this X. It's important to have alerts set. I have lots of alerts set, as you can see. Uh, I probably have to clean some of these out. But what I'm doing with these alerts is I am making it so that you know I always know I don't have to watch the chart constantly to know when price is coming to a certain place. Now, something we should keep in mind is, you know, how long do we want this alert to last? Like, I could have it once per bar, meaning once per candlestick, if we are touching this line, I will get the alert. And I can have this thing open-ended, lasting forever. Okay, or I could only have it last today. If you click only once, remember, it doesn't matter if it's open-ended. If you click only once, this alert will only show up once. If you do once per minute, let's say the three-hour candlestick is trading on this line, you will get an alert every minute while the price is trading on the line. That's pretty annoying. Once per bar close means you will only get an alert when that bar has finished printing and we move on to the next bar. So alerts are very important. Then we have headlines. This will basically give you fundamentals, right, if you're trading Forex. You know, uh, today on July 7th, um, we have this news, right? Forex, U.S. dollar edges higher as market awaits. Fed minutes. Highlights, dollar looks to Fed for future direction. Right, we're getting fundamentals about the news here. If people want news to analyze the charts, personally, I'm not really a fundamental trader. Underneath here, we have a little data window, which is showing us uh, the, for the three-hour candle, it's showing us the open price, the high, the low, the close, and the change in percentage. Okay, this is this will change depending on the um, depending on the time frame that you have, right? This is the 24 minute. This is the daily. 
Okay, we opened at a dollar eighty-two. The low was a dollar seventeen. I'm sorry, a dollar eighteen. The low is a dollar seventeen. It's telling you basically uh, the current candle, right? The open of the candle, the high and the low of the candle, and the current price of the candle. Then underneath that, we have the. Um, this is just kind of like a little scanner where you can see like a volume change in percent change in price of different assets okay personally I don't really use this but this is what it is um, then over here we've got different kinds of calculators and stuff like this um, again I don't really use this ideas this is where you can um, add an idea and just keep a little note for yourself make it public or private you can publish it so that people can see your idea if they're searching for you on TradingView. Over here we've got public chats. Um, you know, these are people, different chat rooms talking about different things like cryptocurrency. Um, you know, personally I don't really use these. I prefer to be on Discords. Um, and we have, you know, chats between between uh, different people like me and a Super Kitty, who, if you don't know. Uh, you got to check her out, right? She's got a Discord. Check her out. She's a good trader. Posts a lot of good information in there. Definitely uh, a good place to be if you're learning how to trade. Over here, we have idea streams where people are posting different ideas about different assets, right? We can click here and um, you can show only your ideas. You can show um, ideas of, of users and stuff like that. Then um, right here, we have different streams, people streaming. I really don't use these things, guys. I really don't. Uh, different notifications of people who are following you um, or people who are starting a new stream. And then right here is the trading panel. This is where you can actually connect to a broker to ed enter and exit trades through TradingView. You know, if you're trading Forex, you can connect. If you're trading on Gemini, you can connect. Um, really, the brokers, you can connect down through here. These are the brokers that are compatible with TradingView. And um, really, they uh, I, I don't use this, to be honest with you guys. And a lot of traders, they don't actually trade through TradingView. They just, um, they trade on their exchange and they do their charting on TradingView. If you're brand new, paper trading is, is good. You can do that for free through here. However, however, um, you cannot do it with certain asset pairs. You cannot do it with certain asset pairs, guys. And hang on one second here, because... I've got to, uh, I've got to do, and we're back, sorry about that, y'all. So yeah, as I was saying, we've got the trading panel down here, and then we've got um, this right in here. This is the, um, the bid-ask little panel that we've got going on where you can buy or sell. And um, really, that's, that's about it down, down here. Um, on this right side panel so now we're going to go over the top okay the top panel right here this is really where we get a lot of our options this is where we're going to get our indicators our time frames very important stuff up here so let me minimize this let me get rid of this and right up here guys when you first open up trading view this is the pair okay this is where you can search for pairs and you can do all stock, futures, forex, CFD, crypto index, economy, different types of things like this to help find the pair you want to analyze. For me, you know, I'm a big fan of the um, the uh, Bitcoin USD on Bybit. That's currently what I'm using for now. And uh, next to here, we're going to have time frames. Now, when you first open up TradingView, your time frames will be in a drop-down menu. Okay. Not all these options are available for the free version of TradingView. I recommend getting the paid version of TradingView, guys. I really recommend it. Um, this is something that's going to help you make a lot of money. It's best to have all the tools at your disposal. Uh, if you're totally new, the free version will suffice. But what you can do is you can choose what time frame you want here on the drop-down. And if you want to quickly be able to switch back and forth between time frames, go ahead and click the star. You can see when I click the star, it adds a little quick button up here to the top of the of the screen. So I like to be able to switch quickly between the one minute and the three minute and the five minute and the 12 minute and the 20 minute and the 24 minute and the 150 minute and the one hour. 
and the two-day chart, okay? These things are now quick buttons for me because I've starred them. Something else I should let you know about starring, down here on the right menu, you can also star things. And when you star them, there will be a little toolbar floating around on your screen that has the things you've starred, okay? So, for example, instead of having to come here and click the right button and come down to fib retracement, if I go ahead and star that fib retracement, you guys can see it's showing up right here as I star and unstar. It's now a quick place where I just click this to quickly pull my fib from the January low to the all-time high so that I can get these nice fib retracement levels and stuff like that. So starring things in TradingView is always important if you're going to be using it a lot, okay? If you're going to be using something a lot, make sure to star it. And, um, okay, so uh, that was just a side note. You can star all these things here, star the time frames. Up here now, we're going to select what type of chart we want. Do we want bars, a bar chart? Do we want candles? Do we want hollow candles? Do we want hike and a she candles? Do we want a line graph? Do we want an area chart? There's lots of different things we can do here where we can use Ranko bars, okay? These are very interesting if you ever go down that path. Line break, bars, also very interesting. Different tools we can use, different range types of things here. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's important to select what type of candles you want. Personally, I prefer regular old candles. Then right here, we can compare symbols. Um, you can compare like um, Bitcoin to the S&P, for example. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an interesting, an interesting little, little tool right here. Indicators, FX with the downward arrow. This is going to be where you get all your indicators. Okay, when we click this, we have our favorites. These are the ones that I have starred because these are my favorite indicators right here, okay? You can search for them. Search for RSI. And when you find it, make sure to start because when we first open this up, we're not going to have any favorites. You're going to have to search for the MACD and then you're going to have to star it, okay? And when I star the MACD, you can see it comes into my favorites. I'm going to go ahead and unstar the MACD because I don't like the MACD. My scripts... These are things that you have created by yourself in PineScript. Built in, these are built into TradingView. Okay, public library, these are indicators that people have made. You can find the author of the indicator here, how many likes the indicator has. Volume profile, these are going to be volume indicators, right? So we can get session volume. We can get, uh, you know, visible range going on, the VPVR indicator. These are going to be those indicators here. And then invite-only scripts. These are scripts that you have to have, um, you know, uh, either you're paying for them, right? You're paying for these things, or you've been invited by somebody. So, for example, Market Cipher. Okay, Market Cipher B. Um, this is an invite-only script because it's a paid indicator. And, by the way, if you, um, here, let me put on the default uh, settings for Market Cipher. If you want Market Cipher, the premier trading indicator, I mean, seriously, this thing is, is kind of like cheating because it gives you such accurate signals. Um, you can, I mean, really, you can long the bottom and short the top using this thing. And if you don't believe it, check out my YouTube videos where I post the trades I have taken, showing proof that I've taken the trades, how I uh, found the setups in advance using Market Cipher. Check it out. Um, but yeah, you will find your invite-only scripts there. This is where you will turn on your indicators. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've got uh, CryptoVac. I've got Market Cipher. Uh, I've got a few things in here. Okay. A few different uh, invite-only indicators. I've got my favorites here. Um, to be honest with you guys, really all I really use is Market Cipher, and. Um, And uh, just uh, other like naked, naked uh, like trend lines and stuff like that. Indicator super important right here. Um, this will give you a whole bunch of different financial stuff. Personally, you know, I I don't um, I don't use this stuff. You know, I'm sure some people do. I don't. So uh, there's just different options up here. This is important where you can save the indicator template. Okay. 
you can save the indicator template here. So let's say I want market cipher, I want crypto vac on my chart, and I want market cipher B on my chart. I can come here, I can click save indicator template and give it a name. I'll give it CM, uh, no, MCCV, and click save. Now what I can do is I can remove everything. And if I want to quickly get back to that template, I just can click this template, or I could click this template here, which is uh, just an EMA ribbon, and it looks like there. I've also got some kind of um, super trend on here and a volume indicator. So you can create trends, um, different ones, like this is a swing trading template where you've got your pivot points on here and different price points. <laughs> you've got your moving average uh, ribbon right here, you know, different ones that come stock with it, oscillators where you've got your stochastic RSI, your regular RSI, the CCI, you know, different different oscillators. Um, I honestly recommend that you uh, you get your you know you don't just use these stock templates. That you do ones that you've customized for yourself. Uh, you click the C button right here. This will uh, put on your indicators. Take them off. Put them back. Right here, replay mode. This is something very important for backtesting. Let's say you are backtesting a certain strategy, and your strategy goes like this. I'm going to go ahead and put on an indicator. I'm going to go ahead and put on an uh, exponential moving average. I'm going to go ahead and set that thing uh, to 21. Okay, 21 EMA. And guys, if you don't know how to do this, right? If you don't know how to do technical analysis, definitely learn. You don't have to take my course, but take a course. Don't just jump into trading uh, if you don't know what you're doing. You will absolutely lose money. But let's say I'm testing my strategy, which is every time we come above the 21 EMA, I will long, and every time we come below the 21 EMA, I will short. Okay, we're going to test out this strategy. So we can click the replay button and come back to, let's say, right here. And... Um, what we're going to do now is we can go back in time and, and test our strategy where we can click, whoa, sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me see, we're going to come back, where were we, somewhere right here, okay, so we can play one bar at a time, we can put on auto play like this where it's just going to play for us automatically. We can watch the price move, or we can um, we can jump back to a certain place on replay mode, which is nice. Or we can manually manually make them go the way we want. So let's say we wanted to just back test a strategy, you know, the, the EMA crossover strategy. Let's say. Okay, boom. We got a candle confirmed over the 21 EMA. This is where now we can back test by coming here. We're going to go long. We're going to put the stop loss below the last swing low, let's say, set our take profit at the, the nearest resistance level, let's say here. You know, we got a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. See, oh, what do you know? We would have hit our final take profit. Okay, that would have been a winning trade. Uh, so now we know uh, our strategy. We have um, one win, zero losses. Let's see what happens next. We short when we lose the EMA. We long when we gain the EMA. Okay, boom. We have a candle confirmed below that. So now we're going to short. We're going to short right here. We're going to set our stop loss above the last swing high. We're going to set our take profits down to the first uh, support, which is really, honestly, only right here. Um, and let's see what happens. Okay, great. We won that trade too. So now we know we're two and zero, oh, right? Two wins, um, zero losses. Let's see now what happens. Okay. Uh oh. Whoa. -oh. Okay, cool. Got the uh, the beach ball of death there. And uh, okay, blah 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 blah, doing our thing. You guys get the idea, right? Basically, I'm back. To, I'm going back in history to test my strategy. Okay, boom, we got a candle confirmed above the 21 EMA. We enter long, 
stop loss below the last swing low. Uh, first take profit would be up here. Second take profit would probably be up here. Third take profit would probably be way up here. So, uh, you know, that's how we do it. Let's see what happens. Well, what do you know? Boom, 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 boom. Uh, did we hit one take profit? Yeah, we hit a take profit. You know, keep on going up, up, up. Up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down. Okay, you get the idea. We're back testing this strategy. This was a winning trade too. That's how you are going to do replay mode. It's really cool. This right here, these two arrows will, um, they're basically the uh, the undo, redo kind of things, right? I can undo that brush stroke. I could redo the brush stroke. Undo, redo, 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 undo, redo. Andurido. Yeah, Andurido. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Andurido. From the town of Andurido. Okay, so, remove. Right here, this is where we can select what kind of layout we want. We could have many charts on the same screen. Okay, I could have a Bitcoin on this chart. I could have Ethereum up on this chart. Okay, for different exchanges. I could have you know Bitcoin on one exchange, two, three exchanges at the same time, analyzing different charts here, and I could have multiple time frames. So I could have Bitcoin on the one minute, Bitcoin on the three minute, right? Bitcoin on the twelve minute, Bitcoin on the twenty four minute. I could have Bitcoin on the one hour and Bitcoin on the four hour, all at the same time. And also what this is doing is, you know, I can see multiple places at the same time from one time frame. So if, I, if I'm if i moving my cursor, you can see my crosshair is showing me where I'm at on all the different time frames. So if I'm on the 4-hour time frame, you guys can see, or if I'm on the 12-minute time frame, you can see my cursor is moving across those other time frames, showing me where everything lines up. It's pretty nice. There's a lot of different options you can mess with here. I'm pretty sure this is only available for the paid trading view version. Okay. And then you can give your chart a name. And this is important because what you can do now is you can have this chart saved. So like for me, I have like a working Bitcoin chart. I have a working Ethereum chart. I have my Ethereum level chart for July. And what, what you can do here is I can go ahead and save this chart as unnamed. And what I can do is I can click sharing on, which will allow me to copy this URL and share it with somebody. They'll be able to copy my chart onto their chart. I can rename the chart. You can decide what, whether or not you want auto save on or off. That's important. Right here, this gear, this is the same as if you had right clicked the chart here and went to settings. Okay, same thing. This is full screen mode. Okay, right up here, full screen mode. This is a snapshot. This is so you can share a chart with somebody. Let's say you drew this beautiful chart. Okay, you drew a nice heart on it and you drew a nice little rose on the chart too like this okay got the rose got the leaves okay you want to share this with somebody you just go ahead click this picture it will give you a little URL you can copy and now you can just paste that URL into a browser and and you can share your chart and say hey look people look at this cool heart and rose pattern I saw like this this is what I did here I took the snapshot to show people look this is the trade setup I'm looking for okay um, so that's that. Uh, and then we have down below us, the last thing that we want to talk about is this here. So i got to kind of just move this. We've got this down here, the stock screener, the text notes, the pine editor, the strategy chest, the trading panel. The trading panel is where you can link through your broker. This is to create a strategy uh, and pine script. This is the Pine Editor where you can actually create your own indicator here. Text notes just to give yourself notes and a stock screener. A crypto screener where basically you can set different parameters, oscillators and things like that to look for different things and assets to trade. I honestly don't recommend using that but some people do. And really guys, that's it. One last thing also, you can do a logarithmic scale down here. You can do a logarithmic scale, or you can do an auto scale. The difference really is, you know, the scale, <laughs> the scale. And here, click percentage. This will do percentages versus price. I always like to keep that in price. Also, there's a gear right here, guys. This will give you 
like to count down to bar close. You see how I have five seconds until the one minute bar closes. You can turn that on and off by count down to bar close. Currency, this will put a little label here showing you what currency it is, Bitcoin USD. Um, you know, whether or not you want that on there. Um, different labels, like a uh, simple name label. I just took that off, I don't like that. Um, all these different labels and stuff here. Um, inverted scale, this will turn the chart upside down. Okay, this will turn the chart upside down if you want that. Um, it's actually, it's, there's, there's reasons to use it, guys. There's reasons to use it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's about it, guys. This is the Comprehensive Trading View tutorial. And if you... If you guys want to um, learn more about technical analysis, check out my channel. I have a lot of free content on there. I've got a lot of free content on there. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about technical analysis, check out jasongaspertrading.com. Check out the testimonials. This is my trading course focused on cryptocurrency, but really you can extend it into any uh, market and uh, again this is really changing the name of the game for people all right y'all may god bless all of you and i will see you in the next video peace